In the last video we looked at definite integrals. In this video we're going to use definite integrals to find the area under a curve. To begin with we will consider areas trapped between a curve and the x-axis when the curve is above the x-axis. In later videos we will look at curves that have parts above and parts below the x-axis. For now though we will simply consider examples where the curve is entirely above the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw a sketch and all I'm going to do is draw a curve. So let's go ahead and draw a curve. Our curve could look something like so. I'm going to have an x-coordinate of A and an x-coordinate of B. So if we have now a continuous function in the interval now from A to B, we can find the area trapped under the curve using a definite integral. So if I want this area just here, let's just go ahead. I want this part just here. I can say now that if this curve is y is equal to f of x, so let's just go ahead and write that on, y equals f of x, the area trapped under the curve can be given as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. We saw how to evaluate a definite integral in the last video, and that's all we're going to do in this video. So we're simply now using this to go ahead and find our area. So here we are. The area is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Often drawing a sketch will help you with these problems. And what I want to do is start off with a confidence boosting example. So this isn't a proof, it's just an example of how we can see this in action. So what I'm going to do is draw the line, and that line is going to be y is equal to 2x. So that's going to be a straight line, and I'll start it from the origin. So this is going to be y is equal to 2x. Let's just write that on there. So y equals 2x. If I had the x-coordinate here, and I can choose any x-coordinate, let's go ahead and choose the x-coordinate here, 3. Let's do that. So this is going to be x is equal to 3. Now, if x is equal to 3 here, we can say now if y is equal to 2x, then this point right here is going to be 3, 6. What this gives us now is a triangle. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw this triangle. We have a triangle with a base of 3 and a height of 6. So let's just draw that up. So let's put that on. So this is 3 and this is going to be 6. If I wanted the area of the triangle, so the space trapped inside, we can say that the area is equal to the base times by the height divided by 2, 3 times by 6 divided by 2, and we could say that that is going to give us 9 square units. What I'm now going to do is use integration to find the area trapped under the curve. So if I want this area just here, so I want the shaded area. Remember, I started the curve at the origin. So if I just put that on, let's go ahead and put the origin on. We can say this point right is, uh, here is zero. So I can say that the area trapped under this particular line, it's not a curve, is going to be equal to the integral from zero to three of now the function. The function is going to be 2x. And we're integrating now with respect to x. So I can write this now, integrating 2x. We've seen this before. That is simply going to give me x squared. We need to evaluate from 0 to 3, as we saw in the last video. So we can say now that the area is going to be equal to 3 squared minus 0 squared. Well, that's going to give me 9 minus 0, which, of course, gives me 9. We can see exactly the same. I can put square units on if I want, but hopefully that gives you a nice example from something we, we would know. Um, often it's quite um, sort of counterintuitive to think that we can just find an area trapped under a curve by plugging in. But hopefully seeing a shape such as a triangle gives you a nice um, example of how we can use integration to find it. It's not a proof, it's just an example of something that you'll be familiar with. So there we go. So what we're going to do is work through a few examples. If at all we can sketch it, it's, it really is uh, quite nice and uh, it makes things slightly easier if we can go ahead and sketch. 
So here's question three. Find the area enclosed by the x-axis and the curve with equation y is equal to x multiplied by the quantity three minus x, giving your answer as an exact fraction. So let's go ahead and draw this. And as stated, drawing it will help us with our problem. So what we have here is a parabola. So this is a quadratic equation. And we can see now that the solutions for uh, y is equal to zero will be at the origin, which will be zero. And if x minus three is equal to zero, then we'll have a solution now at x is equal to three. This is a negative parabola, so it will open downwards and it will look something like so. So what we want here is the area trapped between the curve and the x-axis. That area is this part right here. So all I'm looking to do is find the area. So we have our limits. We saw now the limits in the last video. We can say that the area will be equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of the function here. I'm going to multiply this out and I'm just going to write this as 3x minus x squared. So we need to integrate this function, evaluate it and give our answer as an exact fraction. As we can see from here, sketching is really going to help with this. All of the area that we want is above the x-axis. So if we integrate, we've got now 3x. So we're going to get 3x squared divided by 2. Minus x squared, well that will be minus x cubed over 3. Or if you like, 1 third x cubed. We're interested from 0 to 3. It won't always be 0. We might have another, a different x coordinate. So for example, a might be equal to 1 and b might be equal to 6. Let's go ahead and evaluate. So the area is going to be now 3 times by 3 squared, which is going to be 3 times by 9 divided by 2. Minus now 3 cubed, which is 27. 27 divided by 3 is going to give me 9. And then we evaluate the 0 through here. So I put 0 plus 0. So what have we got? We've got on here, that's going to be 27 over 2 and then minus, and that will be 18 over 2. So the area is going to be 27 over 2 minus 18 over 2, which is just going to give us now 9 over 2. Or if you like, you can say on there 4.5. Again, if you want to do that in a calculator, you're more than welcome to do so. So what we've got then is 1.5 times by 3 squared. And then we're going to minus on here. This is going to be now the 9. That's simply going in there. And then that will give us now the 9 over 2 as we expected. Clearly, we don't need to do anything with the zeros. So that gives us the area trapped under the curve now. Y is equal to X multiplied by the quantity 3 minus X um, because we found the solutions and it was nice and straightforward. If we were asked to find the area trapped under the curve from the point now where x is equal to 1, so let's put that on. Let's say we were given that x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2. We would do exactly the same. We would simply swap the limits from 1 to 2. If we were asked for 2 to 4, that's when it becomes interesting. And we'll look at that in another video as we will get a negative answer to our integral from 3 onwards. Okay, let's look at another question. This is question number 4. It says, find the area enclosed by the curve with equation y equals root x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 2 and x is equal to 4, giving your answer to three significant figures. Again, if you're comfortable to sketch this up, what we'll have is the following. So this is now the positive root of x, and it will look something like so. So we'll end up with a curve that looks like that. So we want the area trapped under the curve. And we're going from now on here, 2 to 4. So let's put that somewhere like so. It doesn't have to be massively accurate. It's just a rough representation of what's going on. 2 to 4. That area is going to be above the x-axis. So I can simply say now that the area 
will be equal to the integral from 2 to 4 and we have the root of x. I'm going to write that as x to the power of 1 half as we, uh, we use the rules of indices to rewrite that or write it as an index I should say and then all we need to do is go ahead integrate and evaluate. So the area if I'm integrating raised by power divide by the new power so we'll have two-thirds x to the power of 3 over 2 and we're interested in this now from 2 to 4. So um, can we do this? Uh, we can't do it without a calculator. I can certainly do part of it without a calculator. So if I uh, substitute in 4 that's going to give 16 over 3 and then we're going to subtract from that subbing in 2 uh, what's that going to give me 2 to the power of 5 over 2 over 3 uh, so 2 to the power of 5 over 2 uh, over 3 I'll just substitute this into a calculator and we'll go ahead and find that so let's do that so we've got now 16 minus 2 to the power I'm just using the rules of indices here uh, 2 to the power of 5 over 2 or 2.5 I will allow you to substitute this in I assume that you'll be comfortable with that and that's over 3 so we're giving this now to 3 significant figures and the area will be 3.45 so area is equal to 3.45 and that will be unit squared and that is given now to 3 significant figures so that's what we were asked to do we simply substituted in um, if you were unsure, then what you could have done at this stage is simply gone ahead and done it like so. So you could have done, now let's just have, uh, we could have done two thirds. And then we could have simply had here now 4 to the power of 1.5. So 4 to the power of 3.2 or 1.5, entirely up to you. And then subtract from that now 2 to the power of 1.5. And this will give us the same answer. So entirely uh, your decision on how you want to substitute this into a calculator, we get exactly the same either way around. I like to show workings, as especially if it's an exam question, we would be expected to show that. Okay, in question 5, part 8, we're asked to find the area enclosed by the x-axis and the curve with equation y is equal to 2x minus x to the power of 1.5. Okay, let's just consider what we've got here. We've got an equation, and that isn't something that we would necessarily be used to seeing. So what I'm going to do is try and factor this to have some understanding now of some points of intersection. So I can take a common factor of x out. That's going to leave me now 2 minus, and then that will be x to the power of 1 half, or I could say root x. So that's one way of writing it. You can write that as x to the power of 1 half. Remember x multiplied by x to the power of half is x to the power of 1.5. So if we consider now at least what we're going to have here if we think about this we're going to have a point now of intersection at the origin. So we'll have a point where the curve meets the origin just here. So that's going to be zero. Then this one right here is going to be meeting at the point. Uh, so if 2 minus root x is zero, then that is going to give me the point of now x is equal to 4. So looking at this, we're going to have some curve that is going to be above the x-axis. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. And it should look something like, let's just have a quick sketch, it should look something like that. It will be defined for values now of x equal to or greater than 0 and it should do something like that. So what we're interested in now is the area trapped under the curve, between the curve and the x-axis. So we are looking at the area and that will be equal to the integral now from and we're going to have on here our values of 0 and 4 and we've got now 2x minus x to the power of 1.5 and of course we're integrating with respect to x so this is going to give me now 
2x integrates to x squared. I'm going to raise this by a power, so that will become the power of 2.5. So this is going to be minus raised by a power, divided by the new power. So instead of 5 over 2, this will be 2 over 5, x to the power of 5 over 2 as a fraction. Entirely up to you whether you want to write that as a fraction or a decimal. That's what we're going to have. And we're interested in this now from 0 to 4. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can probably do this manually. So 4 squared is going to be 16 minus. And then this, if I take the square root, that's going to give me 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 2 times 32 is 64. So this is going to be minus 64 over 5. And then, of course, the 0 is nice and straightforward. 0 plus 0. You might say, why am I not putting negative? It doesn't matter. It's 0 and 0. So what are we going to get on here? That's going to be 16 over 5 at a quick guess. So as an exact fraction, uh, 5, to, uh, that's going to give me 80. So that's going to give me 16 over 5. And that now is the area. Again, if you want, you can substitute that into a calculator. So if I just put in here 4, what I can do now here is uh, the answer squared. So if I do answer squared, uh, minus uh, 2 fifths, which is 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.4, answer to the power of 2.5 or 5 over 2. And that will give us now the 16 over 5. OK. We now need to find the area trapped between the curve, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 1 and x is equal to 4. So what we've got different here is that instead of going from 0, we're going now from this point right here to this point right here. So we don't need to do anything different other than change the limits on the integral. So this time, I'm simply going to substitute in here, instead of 0 into the next bracket, I'm going to substitute in the 1. So what we'll have then is for 16 minus for 64, which is 16 over 5. Then I'm going to subtract from that, and instead here of being 0, I'm just going to put 1 in. So that will be 1 minus, and then 120 power is just 1, so that's going to be minus 2 fifths. So that's going to be 3 fifths, so 16 fifths minus 3 fifths is going to give me 13 over 5. And we can see with a subtle change there, I can simply now go ahead and find that. Um, so all I've done now is considered that particular area. So let's go ahead and look at that. So that's a bit that I found instead. So all I've done, I've not needed to integrate anything differently. I've simply changed the limits. I've simply now said that the area will be equal now to, and we're going to have the x squared minus 2 over 5, x to the 5 over 2, and we're going from 1 to 4 instead of 0 to 4. And that is what I've used. I've used my answer from the last part. Right, let's, um, let's have a look at this curve. So what have we got? 2x. So let's actually plug this in. So y is equal to so y is equal to 2x minus, and I'm just typing this in, x to the 1.5. So that's what we've got. That's the curve right here. And we can see it again. It will be defined for values of 0 or greater. Um, it's highly unlikely you'd have that as a straightforward exam question because I don't think you'd be expected to know the shape of that curve. And that's how using a graphing calculator can really help with these what I would call building exercises. Um, they're more challenging, um, but again, I think it's, it's good practice to, for you to get some idea of what we're looking at. So there we go. That is finding the area trapped between a curve and the x-axis, when the curve is entirely above the x-axis. We simply integrate, uh, we consider the limits, and then plug the values in and subtract away as we did in the last video. In the next video, we will look when we have an area above and below the x-axis.